Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Mirko, a podcast where we talk with coffee professionals from all over the world and we just try to uh, add value to people who love coffee and not just about coffee, be it philosophy, be it life, uh, bits and pieces. So today's guest is another incredible human in the coffee world, uh, Michael Harris, and uh, before he comes in, I just want to say hi to all of you. Thank you uh, for being here. I hope you're well. Hope you're safe. And speaking of him, uh, here's right here. So we'll bring him on. Hey. Hey, everyone. Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> Uh, fantastic. How are you doing? What a big smile. What's up, Michael? Good, good. I'm, I'm good. I'm here in the Philippines. Um, it's really hot. Uh, <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's, um, thank you. Thank you for giving us an hour of your time um, to, to come here and have a chat and record an episode. Um, I just hope you and your family are doing well. Uh, with the pandemic, how's everything going with that? Uh, we're all right. We'd, uh, we've been indoors uh, for over five months now, like the rest of the world. Um, I think uh, more or less Philippines is just like everyone else. Everyone's uh, afraid of uh, the pandemic. Everyone's trying to survive, trying to keep safe. And um, I think I think it's great. It's 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 great what we're doing. We're 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 like you know, so far away from each other and uh, we're able to communicate. And this is what the world needs, some community. And, and the coffee community is just amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, for sure. I think, I think that's, well, that's exactly the reason why uh, I started doing this. So uh, you, you hit the nail. Um, but I'm glad, that, I'm glad to hear that you're doing well, man. And uh, um, look, just to sort of give context, we'll start with the ritual first question could you kindly tell us more about how you started your coffee journey um i started in coffee in 2001 so i've been in the industry for a long time uh i started off as an enthusiast i love coffee um i came back to the philippines in 2001 to help in the family business our family business is rope making uh we're rope makers and um, you could imagine that, uh, you know, being a 20 year old at the time, telling your friends that you make rope. So it's like the lamest job ever, right? Like, you know, hey, so what do you do? You're in a club, right? And you pick up a girl or whatever and you go, I'm a rope maker. Like that's, that's kind of strange, right? So, you know, um, yeah, so I, 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 I'm a huge coffee enthusiast and I was brewing coffee every day. And I just decided that uh, I needed to do something else other than rope. And uh, that's when the, you know, I, I fell into the rabbit hole. And, um, you know, it's, it's been years and I'm loving it, man. The coffee industry is awesome. Um, I got into competitions a few years ago. And, and uh, yeah, I am, it is one of the most wonderful industries in the world. The sense of community is just amazing. I don't think there's any other industry as tight as the coffee industry. Funny enough, you use the word tight because uh, of the ropes. Um, the <laughs> I, um, I find it very endearing, very wonderful what you just said. And because it's funny because my one, one of the first youtuber that i really started watching years ago his family business is a rope business um really? and he's sort of kind of the same his passion towards you know making films and making videos and he kind of went with that and it's really encouraging and inspiring your story because um we often see the unfortunate situation where people where it's cultural background or family or society they sort of feel quite stuck and obligated to pursue a certain direction in life, but they don't necessarily love it. Versus you were like, I love coffee. And uh, so it's really inspiring that you just went from, you know, rope to coffee. 
uh, it could have been anything, but the fact that you've done that transition, like, was that easy, you know, when you came to kind of conversations with your family and say, well, this is kind of what I want to do? I mean, can you explain a bit of the process and how difficult it was, I'm assuming? Um, well, I'm, I'm lucky that I have a really supportive dad, uh, and he loves coffee too. But, um, you know, the, the deal was basically, you know, I can enter coffee, I can follow my dreams, but I have to keep the family business running because that is, or that was the bread and butter. Like, you know, um, it's what puts food in our mouth. Uh, it's what put us through school. So uh, till this day, um, we are still in the, the, the rope industry. Uh, we are one of the oldest uh, Manila rope factories in the Philippines. And uh, I think there's not many left in the world. So, um, yeah, like, I think it's, it's great to follow your dreams. But the important thing is um, remembering where you're from and, and uh, you know, respecting that family tradition. So um, these days, I'm really proud. When, when people ask me what I do, it's, it's coffee and rope. So, you know, it's, it's kind of cool now, right? <laughs> it is. It is. I, I, and you're still right. I think, I think uh, it's, it's, like, um, it's like a journey, you know, like losing weight. Or if someone need, wants to lose weight, it's like, well, remember where you were. You know, you might not be where you want to be, but you're also not where you don't want to be. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it's... It, it's important to sort of look back and and stay true to your roots and uh, culture. I really respect that. And uh, in terms of you know coffee and what's what sort of work you do now and what you know to give some context to the audience. What what's your day look like in coffee uh, and the rope business? Well, well, these days it's just staying at home. So it's the the routine is wake up, check my email say hello to everyone and, and maybe Zoom meetings. Um, but before, before the lockdown, before uh, this pandemic all happened, uh, it was one of the most exciting things, man. Like, like I get to cup some of the most amazing coffees in the world. Uh, we, we run a roastery um, and uh, we supply a lot of the, the hotels and the chain stores here in the Philippines. So, you know, quality control is like a major thing. But uh, most of the coffees that uh, the hotels and the chain stores order are uh, commercial quality. So mm -hmm. the nice, yummy stuff, um, that one's for our cafe. Uh, we also have a cafe called The Giving Cafe here in the Philippines. And uh, it's a social enterprise where a portion of the proceeds goes to coffee farmers here in the Philippines. Um, Philippines is one of the lucky countries that grow and consume coffee. Uh, we're not tea drinkers. We love coffee, and our coffee consumption is uh, is way way more than how much we can produce. Um, we also do a lot of work in the farms. Uh, we do, you know, every harvest season, we're up there uh, helping the farmers process their coffees, and yeah, it's coffee is amazing, man. Like especially when you're at the farms, it is something I really really miss, and. Um, I think any coffee professional and every coffee pro professional should go to the farms and really experience firsthand how much work there is and how much passion goes into that, uh, that coffee. Uh, it's wonderful talking to you. Um, you got this big smile. And you can really feel the happiness. And it sort of reminds me of, uh, going back to what we were talking about, so sort of reminds me of um, my mom and my dad, my parents, which I, I'm very lucky to, to have them because no matter what I decided to go where and what to do they'll give me their opinion you know like not going to university you know like mom she's a teacher so she she gave me her opinion that was what well, you should go but the last question I would ask is are you happy and you're kind of proving this right now which is like it's so clear it's so obvious people seeing you is like even you talking about it and you're happy, that like coffee's making you happy. So it's like, you're really winning, if, if you know what I'm saying. Like, you're winning yeah. the, the, real, the real prize, which is loving what you do. Um, what, how was the transition going from coffee enthusiast, geek, nerd, call it whatever you want, to professional? Because I think there's a lot of people who are kind of 
in that at that level, they know more about coffee than I do, and I've been in coffee nine years, and you know they kind of want to go to that. But how do you transition from hobby to passion to job, profession, career? How's that process? I think uh, you're you're right, man. Like if you love something, if it's something that gives you happiness. Um, it's the best job in the world. So to go from enthusiast to to making it your everyday, your job, uh, it's it's easy. You just have to follow your dreams and have a plan. Like having a plan is always great. So um, a lot of the a lot of the baristas these days here in the Philippines, uh, you know, a lot of the cafes are closed because of the pandemic. So a lot of the baristas these days they've made home businesses. They're they're um, they're at home. Uh, making cold brew and they're on Facebook selling their cold brew and and they're making a good living like they they make enough they actually make more than when they, when they were making or, or working in a cafe so um, it's really having a plan uh, and and um, I think anything any any profession uh, there should be a starting point there should be you know you have a goal and then you got to figure out how you're gonna get there um, so, yeah, like, I, I'm just lucky that, you know, I, I got into coffee a long time ago. Um, it was still, I don't know, second wave, maybe, <laughs> dark roast. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and yeah, it was, I, I'm just lucky I, I, I got into it early. And it's, it's great. It's like, it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you were saying how, Philippines is very much a coffee drinking country and, uh, you know, growing and drinking. So um, I'm assuming that the vast majority of the population drink a certain coffee, like you were saying, more on the maybe commercial side or the darker mm -hmm. bro side. How did you, how did you stumble across light roast? How did you stumble across these amazing coffees that you're cupping like? Like, you know, was it through forums or what? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Because we, we give it for granted. I'm in Melbourne. It's like, it, yeah. it's stupid. Like, I, I can, in a 10 kilometer radius, is like, I don't know, 35 amazing roasters. Um, like, how did you get into the, I guess, the, the good stuff, like you the call it? The good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the great thing about coffee, man. Like, uh, you know, I attended the. Uh, SCA in the in the states every year and and that's where you make friends making friends in coffee is really easy and they are the they're the pushers man they would push you like if you are happy with your dark rolls they will get you into like the good stuff man they'll they'll get you into like the geshas and so it's it's like um it's almost like having a bad influence or a good influence yeah let's let's say good influence um you know they they give you a bag of like the first time I tried a Gesha, it was uh, from Esmeralda. And, you know, it was just a friend. He, he, he was like, hey, try this. And I tried it. And, you know, the taste was just so out of this world good that I had to look for it. I had to ask my buddy, uh, hey, do you have any more? Because, you know, it's so unbelievable how it tasted. So, yeah, man, like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's these friends. It's... Um, you know, these guys who, who go, hey, try this. This is a CM, uh, you know, experimental CM. Try it. It tastes like raspberries. And you go, whoa. <laughs> wow. It's so contagious how your, your, you know, like your happiness. It's incredible. Like you don't even need to say it to me how much you loved it. That those experiences were obviously amazing. And uh, in terms of, you know, you're then – kind of say, well, I'm going to compete. How defining was for you to reach the world and, you know, do amazingly as you've done? It was, the decision to compete was a scary one because, um, again, I, I've, I've been in the coffee industry for a long time. A lot of the business owners here in the Philippines uh, in the coffee industry would say they're the best, right? They would all say that, you know, I know the most, I am, you know, they, 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 they would exude that, uh, that image. And um, I always thought that by competing and, and competing in, in the world even, uh, it would put, um, 
it, it's like walking the walk. It's it's like putting everything I know into a routine, 15 minutes, and just give it everything I got. And um, it was the scariest thing in the world because I I've always had uh, I'm 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 shy. Uh, I'm very shy. I'm afraid of the mic. I'm afraid of the stage. So it was just something that I had to get over. So I, I went to a lot of um, uh, trainings on public speaking. Uh, I watched a lot of hours of YouTube on how to speak, how to how to do routines, and how to you know just present. And it was just passion, man. It was I, I was training uh, almost five hours a day every day. Uh, to prepare myself and it took me about a year uh, the first year I competed um, I came in fifth here in the Philippines in our nationals and I was devastated because you know if you put that much hours into something that you really really wanted um, yeah I was broken man and uh, I didn't even want to see an espresso machine for like a few weeks uh, after mm. that and when you know and then I, I, I talked to some friends again it's it's all about community uh, when I when I spoke to my buddies in coffee they were like come on give it another try you know compete again and, and, and this time um, go on the stage and talk about something you love something that's meaningful um, and uh, that's that's when I found it again and, and that was what I went with and I won nationals and I went to the world in Boston, and uh, yeah, I, I came in fifteenth. It was uh, it was really nice. Um, I'd love to compete again. It's addictive. It's very very addictive, and I think I'm not done. Like I, I still have um, a few things that I'd like to to show the world and and bring Philippine coffee into the world stage. I love it, and and that's actually something that Dan Fallows uh, sort of. No, sort of. He kind of said that on Wednesday or Monday's interview, and he was saying how to him just when he won the 2018 World Coffee in Good Spirits, the minute he won, he was like, he wasn't satisfied. He knew that he had a few other things that he wanted to to sort of present. Like he wasn't done, like you said. So it's amazing to have that, and I think I think that it can be quite difficult when you put that many hours to don uh, manage to hit the targets that you kind of had given yourself but i think it's also extremely important to remind that's okay too because in a competition you have a, a 10th spot ninth first second um otherwise without 15 or five you wouldn't have number one um and patience i think it's incredible that you just started and at the second try you already landed top 15 in the world and um and i'm sure that we're not done seeing more from you and it's 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 very inspiring for sure and speaking of that it's like what i mean competing is one aspect and you like you said is addictive and but you know not everybody wants to compete which is okay well how important is for people to sort of channel their sub passion you know okay coffee is your passion good fantastic is it important to find the next passion within coffee so is it photography is it competing is it roasting is it business so you want to build the next starbucks is it um, latte art how important was for you to sort of understand where you fit in the coffee world I think it's really important to have um, a secondary p passion. Like um, I've been watching your videos. I really like uh, the the how you do the what do you call it? It's almost like TikTok. What you're doing, like videography, right? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really like that. And and having that secondary passion makes you or diverts you from you know that that you know it 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 doesn't drive you crazy. It's like it's like you can't always do just coffee and and having another hobby gives you you know a little bit of a break or else you'll burn out and you'll just not want to do you know what you love anymore so 
you know like like going out for a jog is nice or or uh, working on a farm or you know like all these things and it all comes together um i, I haven't met anyone who who's into one thing and it, only that one thing like it's always you know we're humans man we're, we're we yeah no that, 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 <laughs> that, no, no, no that's for sure now, i suppose what i was trying to ask is uh, that that is super relevant what you said it's it's true like you need to have something out of coffee i was trying to ask more your like like finding your real passion in coffee because coffee is this big huge yeah 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 and people, I think it's important to start to find your position within coffee, because you can't do everything. You no. can, but you can't. So, what? How? How did you choose what to do in coffee? Is the question. Is like, how do you do? Then you know you go from okay, coffee is my passion, but I'm going to go hundred percent into latte art, mm. uh, competition, uh, roasting, because some people can't roast because of their personality they need people some people can't be always around people so how did you find your passion within coffee well my passion in coffee is to really create um you know to ensure that it's going to be sustainable like it's it's that that you know in the future our children and our children's children still has coffee to to have right so um my the, the reason why I do what I do is so that we still have coffee tomorrow. And uh, the way I found that was really, it was a lot of soul searching, man. Um, and, and when I went to visit um, the farms here in the Philippines, you know, it's, it's really surprising that a lot of the farms here in the Philippines are backyard farms. So most of the farmers, when they say they're coffee farmers and they're trying to sell you coffee, you know, they don't have tons of coffee. They don't have, you know, they don't have, they can't even supply a coffee shop for a week, man. Like all they have is like five kilos and that's it. So that's how little coffee is in the Philippines now. And, and my worry is with climate change and with, you know, the next generation not wanting to be coffee farmers anymore. They want to be like policemen. They want to be, you know, they want to be anything else but farmers. And the fear is, we're going to run out of farmers. We're going to run out of coffee. So my goal is to ensure that we still have coffee 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, and, and it's become a, a mission. Like I've been, I've been trying, I've been helping coffee farmers for almost five years now. And, um, you know, we've, we've, we've gotten somewhere. More people are planting coffee now. And, and it's not just the Arabica coffees. Um, Philippines has other species of coffees. We have Liberica, we have Excelsa, and we have Robusta. And and even though in terms of money-wise, they don't make much on those coffees, what we're trying to help them with is the processing and, and the post-harvest, ensuring that, you know, like you make a Robusta taste nice, that it, it's not just bitter. Like, you know, that it's made into like a fine robusta uh, that, you know, tastes not just salty, but salty and sweet or salty and, you know, it, that, that it's more complex. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, I, I think getting more and more people to help out creating this beautiful coffee future is, is one of my goals. That's beautiful. And what, what does the word, the word sustainability means to you? Like, because I think sustainability is a, one of those buzzwords, quite, quite of a buzzword in the last 18, 24 months, especially. And it's something that I'm actually passionate myself about it because just of the lifestyle that I choose to have when it comes to what I eat, uh, what I buy and how I buy. Um, I think that we often give coffee for granted, like you said, but I think that we also underestimate how much power we have as individual consumers. So our individual choices have a huge impact on demand, which has a huge impact on supply, which has a huge impact on market, which has a huge impact on planet Earth. So what, sustainable looks like to you 
sustainable is it starts in the soil, like taking care of the earth, right? Like ensuring that the inputs that you put into the soil is, is it doesn't harm the environment. So when we're working with coffee farmers, that's where we start. We start in the soil and then we, we nurture the plant in, itself uh, and, and we ensure that um, the coffees are taken care of and, and that they don't just plant coffees. They don't put all their eggs in one basket, that they live off the land too. So they plant lettuce, they plant citrus trees. It's, it, it's all about, you know, having that ecosystem. Um, just last year, we started sending uh, farmers to uh, bee farming training. And it's been amazing because the bees, they just, you know, live off the flowers and then they produce honey. And it doesn't really cost the, the farmers anything to have the bees. And they sell the honey for a lot of money. So, you know, even the farmers have something to eat. They have a, a way of, of providing income for themselves. And, and for us here in, in the city, um, you know, we ensure that the farmers are taken care of during non-harvest season where they don't make any money off the coffee. So um, I think for me, in my mind, sustainability is all about being able to have, you know, taking care of the land and ensuring that the, the produce is going to be there 10, 20, 30 years from now and uh, ensuring that, um, that we have security, that we have coffee security, that we have food security, that the coffee farmers have something to eat, something to, to put their children through school. Um, to me, that's really important because, you know, um, not, everyone, not everyone's as lucky as, as, uh, as we are, right? Like, you know, I, I, you and me, we, we live in the city. We, we get to drink nice coffee, have three, three meals a day. A lot of the coffee farmers don't have that then. Oh, I, you speak my language, brother. Like I'm having, you know, some sparkling water, um, warm outside is raining and, and cold. Uh, you know, I got a grinder and uh, fancy scale. And yeah, we are the lucky ones, uh, 100%. I mean, I can speak for me, but like, I'm definitely lucky. I think that, you know, just touching base a uh, little bit on this because it's something I'm passionate about is in the last sort of two years I've put so much empathy and focus on my own actions because we kind of live in a bubble especially in the city uh, but the city is where there's a high population so there's a lot of that bubble actually means a lot in the whole ecosystem and I kind of started thinking more about the impact of my purchases because there are certain things that we're not in control of right so um, I, I can't control the weather right, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but I can control my level of wastage because if I buy a lot of packet, packet stuff, if I can, you know, avoid wasting that, creating waste. So I sort of started looking at, you know, different uh, lifestyles. So, you know, one is my diet because if, if the food that we eat needs hundreds of liters of water, mm -hmm. that's a huge impact just for one meal. Instead, if, if our food only needs a couple of liters of water, then it's a different impact already. Just that meal, there's a shift of 98 liters of water saved. Mm -hmm. That's massive. That's just one mm -hmm. meal. Imagine times three times the whole year, that's a lot of water, electricity, um, and that's where sort of I think it's important to realize that we are in control more than what we think. There's a lot of things that we control of. Coffee we buy, what coffee we choose, how we treat it, how much water, and, and, and a lot of other different things. So, yeah, it's interesting. But uh, I'm glad that it's a passion of yours too. Um, Michael, we reached the halfway mark, and I have a, a ritual out-of-the-box question uh, that I've asked all my guests. Um, if you could, who would you like to have dinner with? Like, anyone? Anyone. It's your dinner. I'm, I'll pay for it. You know, anyone. You can choose. <laughs> I'm... Who would I want to have dinner with? Dalai Lama. 
I want to have dinner with Dalai Lama. He is an amazing man. Like I've been a fan of what he does and what he says. I think he is like I'd love to learn, um, you know, his teachings. I also want to figure out like what their belief, how it really works, because apparently they they come back, and they get reborn. And um, yeah, yeah, it would it would be it would be something. It would be one hell of a dinner, man. And 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 I'm I'm vegetarian, so it's okay. Like we we yeah. So you know. We eat the same um, stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm vegan, so I, I, I again we speak the same language, brother. I uh, and that's actually where I was going with the sustainability. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, it's interesting, but yeah, with the Dalai Lama, it would be. I think it would be the type of dinner where your food is gonna get cold because you're gonna ask and talk and try yeah. to get so much that you don't care about eating. You're like. Yeah. I don't mind if the food is getting cold. I just want to listen. Um, it's interesting. I watched um, another yeah, favorite YouTuber of mine, and uh, their entire uh, philosophy is get out of your comfort zone. So it's like they call it, you know, like seek discomfort. And uh, they were lucky enough to be invited to be, you know, in front of the Dalai Lama and be able to ask one question. And it's incredible. It was incredibly, you know, like goosebumps to hear his words. So that would be an amazing guest to have dinner with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. That's, <laughs> that's a good answer. Um, and um, going back to sort of more of my questions. Um, so we all love coffee, or a lot of us do, but it would be impossible with other people. Mm from origins to, you know, from pickers and farmers and producers to roasters, baristas, and as well the people who grab the coffee and off they go. How important is not it is to not forget people in the coffee chain and how important is to make an emphasis and highlight how crucial it is to have all these hands, all these people involved just behind one cup of coffee well people is the most important thing um you know without without customers coffee would be nothing right without without the people who enjoy drinking it every day and enjoying you know the flavors and aroma and all the hard work the entire chain does uh then coffee would be nothing but you know i think that's that's the thing that's that's what i'm starting to see in the world these days with, with the pandemic happening, everyone being locked in and, and staying at home. It's all about, you know, no one can be alone. No one can be, no one can survive alone, man. Like there's video these days. Like I was just on, on video chat earlier this morning with uh, Mokhtar uh, Arkinshali, who, the monk of Mocha. And, you know, it was so nice to see another human, you know? So it's all about, I think being, humanity is all about communication it's all about respecting each other and having empathy knowing what each and every one of us is going through and um that's that's the beauty about coffee coffee connects people coffee is where it's a common language um it's you know any bar any bar in the world or any coffee shop in the world you walk up to the barista and you start talking coffee and and it's instant friendship like like you and me, man. It's it's the first time we've met, <laughs> and I feel like you're my brother, man. Same, the same. It's like, it, uh, yeah. Uh, you speak. I, I said this is the third time I say it. Literally, you speak my language. Like uh, when people ask me what's my passion, everybody is expecting coffee or social media because that's one of my businesses, but. Uh, for me, it's people, you know. Today, I went downstairs to pick up a parcel, and uh, there was a friend that was kind enough to send me some coffee, and uh, and it was very much welcomed. Um, and I saw a lady uh, in the room with a little, you know, cubicle mailbox, and and I was like, oh, a human, you know, like hello, you know, like 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 like, like. and uh, uh, you know, we we did a brief exchange and uh, and uh, it, it, yeah you're right connection is so important uh, you know it's just it's just 
you know, the best coffee is not the one with the highest score. It's the one that you enjoy truthfully, the full experience, where is it in a forest, where is it into a farm, and you're with these amazing, beautiful pickers and farmers, and you're sharing a cup of coffee that's not roasted well, it's not necessarily brewed with the perfect water, but then you hear their stories, they hear, you hear their history, and, mm. and that's what humans are made of, is stories, storytelling, and coffee is just, the, it's just a reason, this is an excuse to get together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. ultimate experience, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, yeah. um, and I think that's where coffee is going to go. It's going to be it, rather, you know, it's not just going to stop at the coffee shops. There's going to be farm tours in the future. Um, and I think these, that's, that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate experience for a consumer who, you know, just goes to a coffee shop and loves drinking their daily coffee. Imagine if they can go to the farm and stay there and just experience how all the hard work put in and tell their friends about it. Like, I think that's, that's where things are going these days. It's not, I think the future generations, they're, they're not into buying the material things. They're not into like fancy handbags anymore. Heck, people don't even wear nice clothes these days because they're stuck at home, right? So experiences is, is what the future is all about. We just have to get through this pandemic. We just have to survive and, and really, you know, look forward to the future. I, I am so hopeful that, for you to be right. I hope that you're right. I hope that's going to be. Um, I think that we're extremely lucky these days to have certain type of technology as well like you said to remain in contact to connect you and i like we just connected and we already have a, a connection after 37 minutes um which is the magic of humans um and um it's funny because everybody wants to go to farm and everybody wants to go to origin or everybody wants to go to a city like melbourne because they want to drink coffee but what we did with mikhail I'm sure you've met him in Boston uh, with Mikael Jassin. We did a little, a virtual coffee farm tour in Bali. So he was touring uh, with his, you know, green coffee company. And, uh, he, you know, he gave us an hour of tour. You know, he showed us the picker, he showed us the bads, he showed us cherries, he showed us process. And I think that's another way to sort of communicate that's another way to kind of expose and expose in a good way to give a platform to say hey these speakers that you see are getting paid 80 cents per kilo and that's actually quite good in our country usually it's less you know so then hopefully like you just said we kind of don't give for granted the things that we have people we have I think in this fast-paced world, we give for granted a lot, like oxygen, water, yeah. uh, food, a roof, and even Our people internet. around us. <laughs> even people around us, we give it for granted. We give for granted our partners. We give for granted our families. We give for granted our friends. Like maybe after this pandemic, hopefully people will start to realize that well, you know, we might not have the fancy things, but there's a lot more that is so valuable. Yeah, experiences. Yeah. Memories. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And often those memories and experiences are made with, for, around people. Yeah. Very rarely you're going to have amazing memories and stories that don't involve people at all. Even a video game, even like you playing video games online with a team, you know, how you, mm -hmm. you, your teams or whatever, I don't play, but my brother does. And even that 
with people because you're playing with yeah. against someone else or you're playing with someone else so even if your best memory is video game and you think that doesn't involve even then there's people involved in the process and yeah. there's people who made it people who built that video game right that, those are humans and and yes. it's yeah like we 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 have to remember that that uh humanity is still good there is still yeah. good in the world and 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 uh you know right now i think this is a good reminder man like i i know it's it's it sucks that you know people are getting sick but again it reminds us to be humans to to be to have empathy and 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 feel what other people are 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 going through um there's a lot of people with no jobs out there and and you know we just need to support them and inspire them to help themselves uh, it... Yeah, and how precious is life, but how fragile. Yeah. Look at us. Yeah. We thought, you know, we keep we keep claiming that we are the the what they call it, the top of the food chain, right? Which is okay. utterly bullshit because it's not. Uh, you know, try to swim with a shark. Um, <laughs> um, so, and yet, a little tiny virus that we can't even see. Mm. is putting everything on hold on pause on stop yeah. on yeah. so all of a sudden we realize our everything is actually quite fragile and beautiful in a way Frag fragility is beautiful in a, in a weird way um and yeah and yeah look i think we i think we're lucky to have what we have the minute that you realize what others don't have so you're yeah. you're 100% right um this is all quite deep and philosophical which is probably the best part of this conversation but there is one question that is quite different because uh, I've never been but what's the Philippines coffee scene look like because I think it's just like this little underdog silent and then eventually people were like well this is going on in in the Philippines not just at farm level even at coffee shop level like what's what does it look like and how and how you see it how have you seen the evolution of it um in the past few years we're starting to have third wave shops open up uh but because the the regular consumers or the majority of the consumers are still they don't have the palate for you know the fancy coffees so in terms of coffee shops most the ones that survive at least are the ones who offer the consumers what they like. So what they like is something bitter. What they like is, you know, the the standard like, you know, put lots of sugar in bitter black water and that's that's how you survive in business. But there are there is a movement where um a lot of home coffee enthusiasts uh they they get together as a community and they start sharing coffee, they start sharing knowledge and I think that's the hope man like that's that's that that community where they push each other and they they share their coffee experiences they have virtual cuppings these days like it's it's pretty amazing these virtual cuppings they and 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 it's it's like they ship out the same coffee to everyone they get into a facebook room and they taste they brew it the same way somehow and they share what they're they're tasting and it's so amazing and I think um the philippine coffee industry especially the specialty industry will grow it'll just take time um changing consumer behavior is difficult uh yeah as humans we don't like change we we like keeping our you know we like sticking with what we know but i think what's happening now is out of boredom and curiosity people are starting to try different things and yeah. that's how that's how i feel the coffee community here in the philippines will change um we are starting to grow some really nice coffees and and it's starting to get out there people are starting to taste it and and the thing with nice specialty coffees is once you taste it and you can't go back flavors no you can't go back man <laughs> like if you taste if you taste like passion fruit 
peaches and 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 uh, Earl Grey in your coffee. You know, you're going to look for it, man. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not you're not going to put milk in it. You're not going to put sugar in it. And that's uh, yeah. it. So, um I think I think we're getting there. Um especially now that we we were able to produce it here in the Philippines. Um you know, the post-harvest uh methods have been elevated. And um of course, if the supply is more accessible, uh the consumers will be able to taste it. And and that's step one, man. Like if 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 a consumer doesn't get to try the nice stuff, they'll never know. Like if all they know is instant, then that's that's all they're gonna have. Hundred percent. And uh, big shout out to Peter down here. He's a big fan of yours, and he's a uh, is another another amazing coffee lover from the Philippines, and he's now in Melbourne. So cool. he, you got you got a fan right here. And uh, hi, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, no, he's, he's, he's a legend. Peter is a, is a good guy. Um, I met him before the second lockdown happened. I think um, just to throw it there as a little, I guess, maybe an interesting story. So Italy is quite similar t- to a certain degree, right? So it's like big beta espresso, two sugars in it, up, let's go. And um, there's a shop in Brescia that they found, I think, a formula that could work. I mean, maybe there is already in the Philippines, but they found a good formula, which is they structure the shop in a way that they still can give the conservative Italian experience, right? Even though the shop looks specialty, but if someone wants to stay with espresso, you know, they got the blend that is not quite the bitter, big commercial stuff, but more towards, you know, like, it's not like super fruity, acidic, and like overwhelming. People were like, oh, okay, that's different. But they kind of leave it there. And then they got the, like an L shop. It's like an L shop, right? Then, you know, oh, hang on, I'm going to do this. So, you know, that, and then you can kind of go through the other side, and that's where you got the coffee menu, a little brew bar with all the filters. And then slowly, it's one conversation at the time, literally. Hey, Peter, I know you get two sugars in your coffee shops where you go usually. Don't put sugar today. And you're drinking, you're like, yeah, I didn't need to put sugar. And that's it. They leave it. They're not, they don't go into specifics and technicalities. They're like, they just leave it. Okay, cool. And then the next time Peter comes back in and it's like, okay, Peter. Um, and I think, I think that works because at the end of the day, they still need to make money. They still need to be able to attract the Italian classic coffee drinker, then, like you say, it's a slow burner, it's a slow process, for sure. Um, Yeah, but um, Michael, thank you so much for coming on. I'm very grateful for the chat we had. It was super, super deep, meaningful, insightful, really grateful to have met you, and I really hope to meet you soon. Uh, in real life and uh, I think we would have a very good conversation and a good a good vegan meal vegetarian <laughs> um, and um, I just want to leave you with a couple of questions before Instagram will shut it all down in about 12 minutes so I want to give you plenty of time to answer this um, first is I'll ask him all combined what would you like to see in the future of coffee which is connected to what's your coffee mission, which is connected to what's next on your agenda? Well, I think what I want to see in coffee is something deeper. Like, I I want to see people in coffee, not just for the sake of making a living or, or being cool, but I want people to figure out what their reason for being in coffee is i think what changed my life was when i realized what i wanted to do in coffee what what i wanted to be remembered as in coffee i really want to help the philippine coffee industry grow um philippines used to be one of the largest exporter of coffee in the world and that was a very long time ago and here in the philippines we keep saying that we keep saying that we used to be we used to be we, we used to be and I think we should stop saying we used to be and start saying we're going to be 
a major exporter of coffee in the world again one day. And and not only that, like I, I want to be able to say that Philippines will have coffee security in the future. Right now, we are importing 90 to 98% of the coffees consumed here. And that's really dangerous, man. Like, like imagine if one day nobody wants to ship coffee to the Philippines anymore, then there would be no coffee to be drank. Then it'd be a really, really rare commodity. That's really scary. And um, I think uh, that's something re really important we need to work on. We, we have over 100 million people here and um, a lot of them drink coffee and we're not growing enough. So I just want to inspire people to start planting again. I want to inspire people to respect you know the the earth where where the coffee is planted and and live off it live off the coffee live off uh, my dream is to ha live in a farm one day i want to retire in a farm i want to i want to get out of the city stay in a farm live off it eat you know from the farm and and live you know a quiet life read books um have internet very important to me um but yeah it's uh so yeah like for for the rest of our coffee industry here in the philippines i wish people start finding themselves finding what their dream and their 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 goal in life is what makes them happy because that's what keeps us going and uh there's a lot of people who are depressed out there there's a lot of people who are you know they're 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 looking for someone for help uh for someone to talk to and and you know i'm glad you do this man i'm glad you do this this live thing because you know you you reach people and um yeah and and same with me like if, if there's anyone who'd like to reach out for a chat i'm available just ig um you know i think that's what we can do for each other for now <laughs> I um you and I need to meet a real person. Um uh, uh yeah, I, I, I could probably go on for another hour easily talking with you. Um uh, it's just so easy and natural. Um it's just uh what you said is nothing that I can top off. Um like we just gotta kinda close it like that. I think that that's just what I I'll offer people to close this podcast with your words last in their printed in their memory. Um, and <laughs> on a more personal note, yeah, look, the farm life is actually quite attractive to me too. I come from a small village. So um, I, I, in the mountains, so it's like, yeah, I get it. The, the, the city, I know, I know where you come from when you talk about the city, but uh, look, Dino, then also said, True inspiration, we need to love coffee itself from farms. So, yeah, thanks, Dan, for the input. I think that's that's spot on, the summary of this conversation. And, uh, <laughs> Michael, I feel that you got so much more to say. Just as much as you feel that you got so much, that you're not done with competition, I think that we're not done with this interview. I think um, we need to bring you on in a month or two and just I think that we need to hear more from you. And... Um, I know you're busy, man, but uh, let's let's do this again soon so that we can sort of see where you're at and just follow you. And maybe we can do, maybe we could, based on the lockdown, do something different, whether it's brewing or whether it's drinking together coffee or visit a shop, a farm, your roastery, whatever it is, I'm happy to run whatever ideas you want. But uh, thank you so much. It was It was super refreshing hearing your words talking to you and I feel that I'm very lucky. Like I'm the lucky one that got to hear, interact one-on-one -on -one with you and hearing what you had to say. So very grateful for it, man. Thank you for having me, man. No, thank you for coming and uh, I, I hope to meet you real soon. Peter is suggesting a coffee farm tour. So you better load up your geek, you know, your data on your phone and we'll do a Philippines coffee farm tour. I think that we'll could do be that. a fun we'll do idea. That. Let's do that. Yeah. There you go, Harvest Peter. <laughs> November. <laughs> November, we'll do that. Done. Yeah. Done. It's done. It's decided. Um, again, super nice to have you. And uh, I'll, I'll shoot you a message after this so that we can 
we can sort of yeah make make a, make a, some final points. But thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope you have an amazing day again and ahead. And uh, just stay safe and keep being awesome as you are, man. Thank you, thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks for having me. Thanks, brother. Bye. Take it easy. Ah, uh, my mind is blown. Um, yeah, uh, it's been so refreshing talking to Michael um, on so many levels. He was in the rope business and he went into coffee. He turned coffee into his passion mission. If you know me enough after 70 episodes, you know this shit is what I really love. He was shy, struggled to talk with a microphone and he started competing and he reached top 15 in the world. From rope to coffee, from being shy to talk in front of hundreds of people in a coffee competition. It's just such an amazing, inspiring individual that we just talk to. So I'm just really grateful that I've had this chance to meet with him. And I really don't care about my numbers. I really don't care if Instagram blocks me, limits my engagement. This has been just an incredibly touching human, beautiful human connection experience that I've just had. Um, <laughs> that's just how I can describe it. I'm so happy that I get to share with a few of you. And uh, I, I just think that we just need more more people like Michael to talk about the things that really matter. Um, they're still coffee connected, um, but they're still more important. You know, like he said, he hopes to see coffee to be more than just coffee, to connect people, to be experience and memories. And often we forget that and um, there's a lot to think about after this chat so I hope you enjoyed it if you are new welcome I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you can share this with a friend or with someone that you think that you will find um, valuable this is gonna be now downloaded into an IGTV that you can reshare or you can take a screenshot and share this as a story or however you want and then I'm going to upload this as a podcast on YouTube for people who want to revisit or for people who just follow my podcast or YouTube because they couldn't make it to the live stream. So, uh, look, big shout out to um, Anthony, my man, you're still here. Uh, we got Andre, Tanti, Peter, Andre, Hassan, Rahaf, Deno, and we got Gufo Cafe. So, uh, thank you all for being, uh, you know, here. I see you. I, I wrote a story yesterday. I see you. Your support and love and presence is incredibly, overwhelmingly felt. I, I really see you and I appreciate each and one of you. Um, whether it is, oh, I got a hair on my tongue. Whether it is you posting the first sip, whether it is you watching this, whether it's you re-watching this on IGTV or on the form of, of podcasts, whether it's tagging me on your photos or messaging me. Someone recently reached out to me saying how they've noticed that my interviewing skills has improved. And for me, hearing that kind of feedback was just so nice. Um, this is just the start of this page. This is just the start of this community. Um, this is just, um, this is just, the start we're gonna do more brewing videos we're gonna do more coffee content we're gonna do we're gonna do a lot of things just because I love it and that's uh, that's my call that's my mission so Andre is saying your guests are best Cam on Ben Cam on Ben I don't know if I Cam on Ben um, I'm not sure what you're referring to uh, shoot me a message Cam on Ben maybe I'm missing something maybe my English is <laughs> is tricking me here um, but yeah, my guests have been pretty awesome and I'm very grateful for them. So thanks for noticing. But yeah, I'm going to close it. Sorry for the rant. I had to chest it out. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Keep drinking good coffee. I love you all. And uh, lots of love for me to you and your families.
Ciao.